this lecture, we are going to learn how to use AngularJS to build a Hello World website, a basic project. Before we jump into this video, go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited membership and get access to all of the courses we've ever created. That's over 2,000 hours of content. AngularJS is a component-based framework for building web apps and it's extremely popular. So we're going to learn how we can get started really quickly, really easily with AngularJS. We're going to build our project at jsbin.com. So join me at that website. You could also just use a code editor if you don't want to go to jsbin.com. But we're using jsbin.com because it's a free code editor online that you can use to write HTML, CSS, JavaScript, to see console output and also the output of your website. To create our website, we first need the structure of the website with HTML. HTML is a markup language that builds out the elements of a website. So here at jsbin.com, we already have our HTML set up for us. We can see we have the document type HTML at the top of this HTML tab here in JSBin. This specifies that the document type of this document should be HTML. The, here, the text should not be read as regular text or rich text. It should be read as HTML. And if you don't want to use JSBin, then just create an HTML file yourself on your computer and call it something like hello world.html and then write in all of this code. So we have next an HTML tag. This is an HTML element. In HTML, elements are written with these alligator brackets around the keyword for the element. This element is going to store all of the HTML elements of the page. And you can see that the HTML element has a closing partner here, which many elements in HTML do. They have the opening and then they have the closing. Then we have a head. The head tag is another HTML tag used for specifying metadata. So here we have a metadata tag, meta, specifying the character set UTF-8. This represents the standard English keyboard. We also have a meta tag with the name of viewport and then a content property. This is going to allow your site to be more responsive. So the width of the page will be set to the device width of whatever device you're currently using. Then we have the title of the page, JS Bin. The title is what appears here inside of the tab of your browser. Okay, then we have a body tag, opening and closing. The body element is an HTML element that stores all of the visual components of your page. Great, so we have our HTML set up. Currently, if we go to our output, we won't actually see any content in the output. But here we can put in our first element, like a heading one. We have to open and close the heading one tag. The heading one is the largest and most important heading. So this is where you would place something like your site title or your page title. And then you can put some text into there, such as my website. Then you'll see in your output, you will have the text my website because we put an element into the body of our page. Okay, now instead of putting my website, we're actually going to fill this heading one using AngularJS. So I'm going to use what's known as a member variable to use curly brackets and then put in the name of my variable, such as greeting. All right, now currently if we go into output, we just see the curly brackets and greeting. And that's because we haven't actually connected AngularJS yet. We just have HTML so far. Once we connect in AngularJS, we'll see this whole member variable, which is a placeholder. It will be replaced with our AngularJS greeting. Okay, one more thing we need is we have to build a controller on the HTML side. So we use what's known as ng-controller, and we're going to give our controller a name of greeting controller. So this says that the whole heading one is going to be an AngularJS controller, which we use with ng angular dash controller. And we gave it a unique identifier, greeting controller. Okay, one more thing we need is to specify that the whole app should be an Angular app. So either in the HTML tag or on the body tag, we need to specify that the website should not just be a regular HTML website. 
it should be an Angular website. Typically, you'll put this on the HTML or the body or some div if you want only a portion of the site to use Angular. Let's put it on our HTML. We're going to add a property known as ng-app. So angular-app is what it is short for. And you could just leave it here. This would specify that we now have an Angular app instead of just a regular HTML app. Now also we need to give this a property so we can uniquely identify our app in our code. So I'm just going to use an equal sign and then give this app the name of my app. Now for these commands to work like ng app and ng controller, for these keywords to be recognized and not just be random words, we have to load in Angular via a CDN, which is a content delivery network, which allows you to load in a library or framework like Angular via the internet. So I'm going to go to cdnjs.com. Oops, I just closed it. Let me open it back up. cdnjs.com. You can also just use a search engine to search up a CDN for AngularJS. This is a popular website. What it allows us to do is just copy a link to AngularJS to load it in. And currently we're using a version 1.8.2. You can use a different version. Just note that if you're using some version extremely far in the future, Angular can update and potentially have some new changes to how it works, but likely there will not be many changes. Now, you have several options here. You can copy the link directly, just copy this link, or you can copy a script tag to reference Angular or reference this link in your HTML. And the third option is to copy the SRI hash. I'm going to choose the second option to copy the script tag. So I click on that icon, then I can go back into my JS bin. And here I'm going to just paste what I just copied at the bottom of my body tag. So I just paste that in. Now this is quite a long element, but what we have here is a script element. A script element means that you are referencing some kind of JavaScript. And here we're using our CDN to load in AngularJS. We have angular.min.js, which is the minified version. The rest of it is kind of hard to see in JS bin. So here I'm going to show you a sticky note with what we pasted. We have our script tag. Then we have the source, which is angular.min.js. We then have the integrity and the cross origin and the refer policy. So this is just a default way of being able to load in AngularJS via a script with some properties already set for you. These properties are not required. You could cut these out, but they are preferred by the CDN. Okay, now we can go back to our JS bin and we have Angular loaded in. All right, now that we have Angular loaded in, let's write a script. And we're going to use a script in order to connect the HTML to Angular. So via a script, we can actually take this greeting placeholder and replace it with some value. So I'm going to open up a script tag here. I can also just go into JavaScript right here if I want to write the JavaScript in a different bar. But if you are not using JSBin, then you would have to make a script tag like so and then close it as well and then put all your JavaScript in there. Otherwise, we could just use here our JavaScript. Okay, so this JavaScript allows us to write some functionality that we want included on our web page. Okay, so here we are going to first grab our application. We'll make a constant called app. A constant is a way to store a piece of data and the data we are going to store and it cannot be changed because we're using const. Then we're going to give this some value and we're going to use angular.module. And here we are going to be looking for inside of angular.module, we're looking for the application that we built called my app. And then we have a list that will be empty with square brackets for any options, which we have none. So this is directly grabbing the app that we created, the Angular app that we called my app. So that's what we're referencing there. So now we have a reference to all of our HTML. Okay, 
Next up, now that we have our reference to the app, let's get another reference to our controller that stores our greeting. So I'm going to grab app.controller to find a controller in the app. And we're going to look for the controller with the name greeting controller, which is the one we created. Then we have a callback function, so something that we want to do on that greeting controller. And I'm going to edit the scope. So here we have the scope, then we're opening up the function. So you have to use this exact syntax, this exact way of writing the code. Here we have a function to perform some kind of task, and it's taking in an argument or parameter, dollar sign $scope. This scope is a way we can connect the HTML to the JavaScript. So with this scope, it's a special object in AngularJS, which is a global object used in Angular. The scope object manages data between the controller, which is the JavaScript, and the view, which is the HTML. All right, so what we're going to do is grab a member variable from this controller. Do you remember which member variable we had? Well, in our controller, we had this member variable greeting. So we can actually access that greeting inside of our JavaScript. To do that, we use that scope because the scope is the connector between the HTML and the JavaScript. So inside of my function here, I can take the scope and set its greeting member variable to whatever I want, such as hi. Okay, so I have taken the scope of the greeting controller and taken its greeting property and set it to high. So now if I go into my output, look at that. I actually see high instead of my placeholder of the curly bracket greeting curly bracket. Instead, I now see high and that is thanks to this JavaScript. So I've written some script here to be able to take the greeting member variable in my greeting controller and set it to high. And just like that, we have built out an Angular application. Now we could add more variables here, more member variables. Like I could add another member variable that says a dismissal. Okay, so here now we have greeting and now we have dismissal, but I only see hi in my output. So what we can do is go into the JavaScript and we can access the scope's dismissal property. So I go to dollar sign scope dot dismissal and I can set this to buy. Then inside of my output, I now see hi buy. Now what if I try to access some member variable that doesn't exist like scope dot something and I try to set it to something? Well, in this case, it doesn't appear because there is no member variable that says something. If there was a member variable that was named something, then it would appear. But because there is no member variable inside of our greeting controller that is named something, the something doesn't appear. But we could put it in by going into the HTML and adding in here a new member variable called something. Now we actually see something appear in the output. Okay, and we could change that to something here, and that will be updated in the output. Now, if you're not using JSBin, then just open your HTML file in a web browser, and you'll be able to see this output. If you're not seeing this output, if you're seeing something like just the greeting dismissal or something in curly brackets, it means that you likely have some kind of issue. So if you're seeing greeting dismissal something with curly brackets around them, that means you likely have some kind of issue in your code, like perhaps you forgot to include the ending quotation marks. Okay, in that case, you would see just the HTML placeholders because your Angular code has some issue. All right, so that is how we can build out an Hello World Angular app. We could build out another controller. Let's build out a heading to HTML element. Okay, so a heading two is slightly smaller and less important than a heading one. We could call this less important or just put some text in here that says less important and we can see that preview in the output. All right, now let's turn this heading two into a controller. So we use the keyword ng dash controller to build an angular controller. Let's call this our second controller. All right, then let's remove less important and let's replace that with a member variable like 
for example, name. We'll call the member variable name. Currently, we just see name because we haven't connected this here, this member variable in AngularJS. So we see name. But let's go into our JavaScript and let's grab our second controller. So I am going to go into my app.controller and I'm going to find the one that we just created called second controller. And I'm going to open up a function here. Just make sure you end the quotation marks. We have a function which has a scope. Remember the scope connects the HTML with the JavaScript. So I can take the scope and access its name property. All right, and I can set that to something. And you can watch now, it will set to whatever we put in here, like mammoth. All right, so now we are taking our second controller and we're setting its name member variable to mammoth. So that's why we see mammoth appear in the output. And you'll notice it's slightly smaller than the previous text because the controller is a heading two, not a heading one. If I change the controller to a paragraph in the HTML, the text will be even smaller because now it's not even a heading, it's just a paragraph. So the HTML and the JavaScript are connected. And that is how you can build your first controllers with HTML and Angular. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching and don't forget to go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited Membership where you can get access to over 350 courses that we've created.